Chapter 12, Incident Response Team Policies, other well known as IRT. For this chapter, let's look at the learning objective and the key concepts. The learning objective is we have to describe different information system security ISS policies. The key concepts are incident response policies, team members and responsibilities associated with the incident's response, business impact analysis, BIA policies, procedures for incident response, and business continuity plan or BCP policies, and disaster recovery plan, DRP policies. Incident response policy. An incident response policy defines what an incident is and criteria for activating the incident response team, the IRT. An IRT is cross-functional, meaning that it has people from different departments. It's organized and coordinated, possesses various skills, usually only responds to major instances. Minor instances considered part of normal operations. What is an incident? An incident is any event that violates an organization's security policies, including the following. Unauthorized access to any computer system. A deliberately caused server crash. Copying customer information from a database. Unauthorized use of computer systems for gaming. An unauthorized modification of data. And lastly, disruption of service. Incident classification, page one of two. Classification by attack vector. SQL injection, a technique that introduces modified structured query language, or SQL, into a website. This attack depends on the website allowing unfiltered input. Improperly segmented network environment. Related attacks rely on the lack of partitioning or, an on, or on isolating high-risk assets on their own network segments. For example, in a flat network, all portions of the network are accessible from anywhere on the network. A breach is in one part of the network exposes the entire network to potential access. Malicious code or malware. These programs such as viruses, worms, Trojan applications, and spyware are added to the platform without a user's knowledge. These programs can damage systems, delete files, encrypt files, and demand ransom or exfiltrate confidential data. Insecure remote access. This attacks gaining access through uh, remote services such as point of sale devices, vendor networks, and employee remote access tools. And lastly, insecure wireless attacks assessing the network through wireless points of entry. The wide variety of network devices that are now wireless ready has increased the risk in recent years. Such devices include copiers, fax machines, inventory systems, point of sale terminals, web cameras, and more. Page two of the incident classification. Develop a classification system. This varies by industry and type. It, it should meet legal and regulatory obligations. Use categories that assess uh, threat level, malicious code, denial of service, unauthorized access, or inappropriate usage. Major versus minor. Major incidents are significant. Determination based on risk to organization. The response team charter, page one of two. Develop a charter. Determine the IRT, the, the incident response team model. Set goals, response times, for example. Identify team members. Under team members, you will have uh, charter sessions, sections rather, charter sections. Executive summary, mission statement, goals, team responsibilities, incident declaration. You have definitions and declaration process, 
Under organizational structure, you'll have team alignment and member management. Under roles and responsibilities, you'll have for the team members, <clears throat> information flow, communications, methods, how goals are achieved, and authority of, and reporting, level of, of authority, and source of authority. Page two of the response team charter. On-site response, you have the full authority to contain breach. Supporting role, technical assistance to local team. And then coordination, you coordinate several local teams. Let's take a look at the incident response team members. The common and uh, in the uh, incident response team members are first information technology subject matter experts or SMEs. Okay, the information technology subject matter experts have intimate knowledge of the systems and configurations. These individuals are typically developers and system and network administrators. They have the technical skills to make critical recommendations on how to stop an attack. The SMEs chosen for each incident response effort will vary depending upon the type of incident and affected systems. Then you have information security representative. The information security representative provides risk management and analytical skills. He or she may also have specialized forensic skills needed to collect and analyze evidence. Next, we have human resources representative, HR representative. They, they provide uh, skills on how to deal with employees. Breaches do not always come from outside attackers. When internal employees are involved, the HR representative can advise the team on proper methods of communicating and dealing with the employees. They are export experts on HR policies and disciplinary proceedings or employee counseling. Then you have the legal representative. They understand laws and regulation, uh, regulatory compliance. This person can be a valuable advisor in ensuring compliance. His or her work will involve reviewing the incident response plans, policies, and procedures. During an incident, the legal representative can help facilitate communications with law enforcement. This person can examine the ramifications of decisions. The representative can also provide expert guidance on legal issues such as the notification of employees or customers affected by the breach. Public relations or PR representative. They can advise on how to communicate with the public and customers who might be impacted by the incident. This is valuable to ensure that accurate information gets out and damaging misconceptions are prevented. Business continuity representative understands the organization's capability to restore the system, application, network, or data. This individual also has access to call lists needed to contact anyone in the organization during off hours. Data owner. The data owner understands the data in the business. As data owner, he or she understands how the data should be handled. The data owner understands the control environment because data owners are business leaders. They also understand the data's impact to the business and management. Management plays a key decision-making role. Management approves the response policy, charter, budget, and staffing. Management also makes the decision to turn to law enforcement and outside agencies. Ultimately, management is held accountable for the outcome of the incident response effort. Responsibilities during an incident, page one of two. You have figure 12-1 core incident response team. And this depicts a typical IRT core team. Not all members of the core team will be activated for every security event. Some security events are small and localized and thus need a smaller core team. Other events are major and impact the entire enterprise, requiring maximum effort by all core team members. At the time of a security event, the IRT manager determines which resources are needed to address the specific incident. Additionally, uh, notice that upper management is not considered part of the core team. 
Instead, upper management is a consumer of the results of the core IRT. Upper management is, however, a critical decision maker in responding to an incident. Responsibilities during an incident. Page two. Users on the front line. All users must support the efforts of the incident response team, IRT. System administrators help analyze the threat and recommend immediate response. Information security personnel. The information security team often provides management and oversight of an incident response. Management provides authority and support for the IRT, support services, broad category that refers to any team member that supports the organization's business and IT processes. Other key roles. The incident response team manager is the team lead. The IRT coordinator keeps track of all activity during an incident. Business impact analysis, BIA policies. A business impact analysis identifies which assets are required for the business to recover and continue doing business and includes component priority. This phase of the BIA has the following objectives to identify all business functions and processes within the business, to find each BIA component, determine the financial and service impact if the component were not available, and establish recovery time frames for each component. Then we move to component reliance, identify which components depend or rely on other components. And lastly, impact report, the recommendations and integration points into the IRT process. Validate findings of the BIA report. Create consensus for its findings and recommendations. Provide a foundation for other assessments and start educating individuals who are key to the recovery. Development and need for policies based on the BIA. The BIA describes the mission, critical functions, and processes. This report leads to further assessments that identify threats and vulnerabilities. You typically produce uh, a BIE annually. Next, you compare the findings to existing security policies. This comparison identifies gaps that may be opportunities to improve policies. As a business changes over time, the BIE is an excellent way to understand the business. This top priority list of business processes helps to focus security efforts to protect the most vital assets of the business. It also drives security decisions on how these assets are to be protected and recovered. Let's just go over the generalization of this particular figure 12-2 incident response continuous improvement model. Uh, the important takeaway is that instant response is not a one-time process. It takes significant time and effort to create the support and IRT. The organization's commitment and appropriate uh, delegation of authority are essential to responding to incidents quickly and effectively. Discovering an incident. Teach employees how to report suspicious activity. And these are some examples. Suspicious activity of a co-worker is noticed and accounts within the department's control do not balance. An intrusion detection sensor alerts that a buffer overflow occurred. The antivirus software alerts infection across multiple machines. Users complain of slow access. The system administrator sees a file name with unusual characters. The system administrator sees an unknown local account on a server. The logs on a server are found to have been deleted. Logs indicate multiple failed logon attempts. Reporting an incident. Establish clear procedures for reporting incidents. Have a triage process to classify the severity of the incident. Here's a sample severity classification. Severity 4, a small number of system probes or scans are detected or an isolated instance, instance of a virus is found. Severity 3, a significant number of system probes or scans are detected or widespread virus activity is detected. Severity 2, limited disruptions to business as usual or BAU operations are detected and severity 1, a successful penetration 
or a denial of service, DOAS attack, is detected with significant disruption of operations or unauthorized activity is detected. Containing and minimizing the damage. Once you know you have an attack, you need to contain it. The first and, first, first and foremost, you have to contain the attack. Then you have to decide what action to take. The information response team classify attack and determine how to stop it. Execute the predetermined response and gather evidence about the incident. Those are the, the steps or the, that you have to walk through. Cleaning up after the incident. You need to implement a recovery strategy together with the business continuity plan representative. Forensically image the damaged systems for further analysis. Maintain chain of custody for evidence. Get affected systems back in service. Test the affected machines and data. Mitigate the vulnerabilities that permitted the incident. Provide additional monitoring to validate that the systems have been hardened. Documenting the incident and actions. Analysis depends on gathering as much information as possible about what led up to the event, what happened during the event, and how effective the response was. Documenting the incident and actions. A trained specialist collects the forensic information. Ensure the chain of custody on how evidence is documented and protected. The IRT, or Incident Response Team Coordinator, should maintain an evidence log. If any evidence needs to be examined, it's logged out and then logged back in. Where possible, once evidence is logged in, only copies should be logged out for further review. Analyzing the incident and response, identify the following. Who's the attacker? The tool used to attack, if possible. The vulnerability that was exploited the result of the attack, the control recommendation that would prevent such an attack from occurring again. And then you take steps to help the analysis. Update your network diagram and inventory. Profile your network. Understand business processes. Keep all clocks synchronized. Collate uh, central logs and create a knowledge base of threats. Creating mitigation to prevent future incidences, page one or two. Analyze the origin of attack. Create a storybook and timeline of events. You may engage outside help in identifying the attacker. You need uh, consulting firms uh, can be used that specialize in forensic investigations, and various law enforcement agencies can be used if upper management approves it or wants to get them involved. Learn from incidences to improve creating mitigation to prevent future incidents. Page two, a final IRT incident report should answer the following. How the incident was started, which vulnerabilities were exploited, how the incident was detected, how effective the response was, and what long-term solutions are recommended. Meet with key stakeholders to review key points in the IRT incident report. Use lessons learned to improve the incident response process. Handling the media and deciding what to disclose, page one of two. The public relations or PR department communicates the incident to the media and impacted parties. You can collect dis, uh, misinformation that could damage the company's reputation. Often uh, shares this information via press release. Uh, pretty important stuff. You got to know when to do it and how to do it. Page two, the IRT management decides how much information to release, works with the public uh, relations folks to work out the type of disclosure that's appropriate for the situation. And they work with PR and legal to determine what needs to be disclosed to stay in compliance. Privacy laws may require consumers to be notified. Any attempt to cover up a breach is likely to cause additional harm and may be illegal. Business Continuity Planning Policies, page one of three. Create a roadmap for continuing business operations after a major outage uh, or disruption of services. Establish the requirement to create and maintain the plan. Provide guidance for building a plan. Include key assumptions, accountability, and frequency of testing. Business Continuity Planning Policies, page two of three. 
must clearly define responsibilities for creating and maintaining a uh, business contingency plan, identify responsibilities for its execution, and cover the business's support structure. Business continuity planning, page three. The relationships between business impact analysis, BIA, and business continuity planning, uh, BCP, and disaster recovery plan, DRP. The BIA drives the requirements for the BCP, which drives requirements for the DRP. The DRP policies needed to recover IT assets after a major outage. With loss of systems, applications, or data availability. BIA lists critical systems, applications, and user access requirements, includes maximum downtime, drives a selection of recovery methods and techniques. The BCP details the access controls needed to protect the information during the recovery. Response and recovery time objectives policies based on the business impact analysis. Recovery time objective or RTO, the length of time within which a business process should be recovered after an outage or downtime. The measurement of how quickly individual business processes should be recovered identifies the maximum allowed downtime for business process. Often include a discussion of recovery point objectives, RPOs. The RPO is the maximum acceptable level of data loss from the point of disaster. Best practices for an incident response policies. Effectiveness of the IRT and its related policies needs to be measured. Measurements should be published annually with a comparison to prior years. Measurements should include the goals in the IRT charter, plus additional analytics to indicate the reduction of risk to the organization, such as number of incidents, number of repeat incidents, time to contain per incident, and financial impact to the organization. Disaster Recovery Plan, or DRP, policies. The DRP consists of the policies and documentation needed for an organization to completely recover from some incident. Requirements are driven by the BIA and BCP. Considers people, processes, and technology. May be required by laws and regulations. Disaster de Declaration Policy outlines the process by which a BCP and or DRP is activated. Defines the roles and responsibilities for assessing and declaring a disaster. Same activations of the DDP. Emergency notification of personnel, stakeholders, and strategic vendors. Alter alternative site activation. Activation of the Emergency Control Center. Transport and housing arrangements, release of prepositioned assets, assessment of the disaster's severity and of potential downtime. Many critical business decisions during a disaster rely on the assessment of the problem severity, including allocation of resources, notification to customers, assessment of financial losses, and costs. Let's look at some case studies and examples. In the private sector, we first have IT infrastructure leader with compromised servers, consulted and intrusions, consulted and intrusions and forensic analyst firm who traced the attack to a North Dakota high school, illustrated weaknesses in the company's incident response policies and plans. Public sector, government facilities in 23 Texas towns and cities identified the malware as the, I won't even try to pronounce that, virus, uh, due to the improved incident response. Most of the cities were fully operational again within a matter of days and none paid the ransomware. Furthermore, there was an immediate statewide push for more cyber training in improving both defenses and incident response. Then you've got critical infrastructure. One of the largest banks in the country, the security manager created an IRT involving uh, several risk groups and key stakeholders. The effort was jump-started by using best practices. Good example of how regulated industries are required to have effective information response policies. 
In summary, we covered instant response policies, team members and responsibilities associated with instant response, business impact analysis or BIA policies, procedures for instant response, business continuity plan BCP policies, and disaster recovery plan or DRP policies. Thank you so much for listening uh, to this PowerPoint.